The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m., gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m., gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show. Introduce the host. My brothers keep a show. Introduce the host, Pastor Dr. Michael Green. Yeah, they off the chain, man. They on so different tonight. I see how the mic's hot in the and the uh, videos on. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Like, good evening, good evening, good evening. <laughs> All right. It is. It's, it's my brother's keeper show. <laughs> Hey, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the greatest show on this side of greatness. Of course, it is my brother's keeper show. And uh, I guess being out of the loop for a couple of weeks kind of just totally threw me for a loop. So, hey, uh, welcome, welcome again, everybody. Good to see everyone or to see that um, uh, many of you have already tuning in. Uh, so let's start right here. This is the show, uh, My Brother's Keeper, where, of course, we do know that um, greater men continue to make men great with a spirit of excellence. And, of course, we know it's a Tony the Tiger terrific what? Tuesday, and of course, sitting alongside me this wonderful Tuesday, uh, terrific Tuesday, Tony the Tiger, terrific Tuesday, is Dr. Brian Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's good to have you back. <laughs> it's good to be back. I man, I tell you, I, the folk missed you. I, I don't think we had the same viewership the last couple of weeks, man. <laughs> well, I beg uh, to differ. Because when they know that the main man, Mike Green, wasn't oh, in the house, you too they, uh, they just wasn't uh, following through. But I was fortunate mm -hmm. to have some all-stars to sit in oh, with man. the Mangums the and Mangums, with absolutely. Elder AG absolutely. and everything. But, you know, people were like, absolutely. Where, where's my green? <laughs> well, is, is this my brother's key? <laughs> so, you know what? Next time, we, you at least need to leave us the side. <laughs> Because he was like, oh, man. Get off my phone. This is the wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I did, I was able to watch uh, the first one with you and uh, 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 Presiding Elder A.G. Definitely, uh, thank you, Presiding Elder A.G. stepping in. And uh, definitely was a blessing. And uh, Dr. Champion, you held it down. Man, you uh, you rode right through it both weeks, man. You you are the man. Well, I'm just trying you to are the man. Uh, and, follow uh, the lead of the guy uh, who. Uh, uh, Dr. Mangum as well. Thank you so much for being a part of my brother's keeper show. Wow, well, I just wanted to follow the lead of the guy who left me in range, man. You know, when somebody like yourself does a, such an awesome job, mm -hmm. you know, I got to sit back and uh, model. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get an offering to give to Dr. Champion for? But you know what? There's certain things I wasn't even going to touch, uh -huh. you right. know. So it's like, you know, your signature <laughs> stuff. I was like, all right, this is, this is my brother's keeper. Uh, <laughs> We're going to give a shout out to Pomona. You know, I couldn't get with the, it's Tony Tag and Terrific Tuesday and Men Make Great and all, all, all those catchphrases that you have. I just went ahead. I said, no, I'm not going to go there. When, when he comes back, <laughs> he will come back and he'll do all that. But I'll just sit here and I'll say, Absolutely. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, Pomona, California. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> definitely, but you did an outstanding oh, job. You. But uh, again, you took it and you uh, wrapped your personality, you infused your personality within it, and uh, you did great. And thank you well, so thank much. You. But we had, like you said, and you thanked the, the Mangums yes. and uh, Elder A.G. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, yes. they make this work easy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, uh, you know, uh, former sportscaster, Maryland University, uh, presiding Elder A.G. That's right. And then the 
Mangum, he, you know, he's a ball of energy anyway. Absolutely. He's yeah, a... I was probably holding him back. They <laughs> probably looking at me and saying, hey, uh, you know, the Mangum's like, hey, next time, can you hook us up with AG? <laughs> 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 no, you did wonderful. You did wonderful. Also, I'd like to welcome Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Raleigh, Durham, and Salem, North Carolina. Uh, coming back up to New Jersey and Maryland, Washington, D.C. area, all the way on the West Coast, Pomona, California. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Bishop Jelani Kafela, as well as Bishop James B. Walker. Thank you so, so much for your continued support. The call in number, ladies and gentlemen, is 301-429-9247. 301-429-WBGR. Also, remember to like and share, like and share, and the show will be available on our YouTube channel, My Brother's Keeper, um, after uh, we finish live. So please go subscribe, like, and share equally as well. Um, let's get some other announcements. Oh, do know that you can go on Roku and WBGR app, Fire Stick, and also Apple TV um, to tune in to um, the show as well. Uh, also, uh, mybrotherskeeper.org for community events and other news that you may uh, need uh, that will be available to you as well. Um, Again, we already thanked, uh, you know, the uh, awesome Dr. Brian Champion for sitting in for the past few weeks. Definitely uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, just a quick couple of announcements. Um, <clears throat> kicking off this Thursday, ladies and gentlemen, it is the KM3 Retreat. Kingdom Man 3 is going to be at St. Matthew uh, Christian Methodist uh, Episcopal Church on the ground starting uh, Thursday the 12th with the bonfire. And yours truly is going to be facilitating the bonfire. And I tell you, it is going to be on the story of Jabez, the prayer of one man, and how God enlarged and blessed everything that he touched even after being born in pain. It's going to be an awesome retreat and just want you to, uh, to be able to come out. We're going to have um, uh, awesome preaching on Friday night and as well as uh, teaching um, Friday morning. And then we're closing out Saturday uh, with uh, teaching as well as preaching. So definitely we want you guys to be able to come out and, and partake of, um, you know, the, the retreat. It's going to be a powerful retreat. And yours truly over there is going to be uh, uh, coming in. And, and uh, he's going to be uh, closing us out, ladies and gentlemen, on Saturday. <laughs> he, All right. Dr. Brian Champion is going to be closing us out. Also, we're going to be having a uh, pastor of St. John CME Church, uh, Pastor Marcus Rogers. He's going to be preaching Friday night. And Reverend Ernest Richards, who was a former um, a host here, co-host here. And uh, he'll be um, facilitating Friday morning classes. And, and, of course, we're going to make some breakfast, too. So come on out and... Uh, <clears throat> And then enjoy yourself and come and fellowship and, and reason together. But this bonfire, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's going to be so awesome. I have some 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 awesome things uh, lined up. Uh, last year we did marshmallows. We're going to still do some marshmallows oh, and man. put them over the, the little bonfire as well. And uh, just really look to have a good time, a fellowship of men coming together. And a lot of times men don't discuss their pain. But we want to show men how to move from a place of pain to their power through prayer. And uh, the story of Jabez, and that's um, First Chronicles 4 and 9. And uh, how his mother just uh, born him in pain, but he was birthed to power through prayer. And it's just going to be phenomenal. And I just, um, again, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to come out 923 Cedar Heights Drive in Cedar Heights, Maryland, St. Matthew CME Church. Definitely come on out and uh, have a part of uh, the fellowship. Amen. And um, we're going on five years, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to just share five years, five years for my brother's keeper. And I wanted to thank you, the listening audience, for tuning in and taking the time 
and really uh, being a part of uh, my brother's keeper experience and without your listenership it's it's like we could not have done it so we are so god thankful uh for you uh the listening audience who have tuned in um tuesday after tuesday and allowed dr champion and i into your home so we're definitely god thankful and i'm especially thankful to uh the wbgr family for uh first of all giving us an opportunity to come into your homes and 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 feeling as though that my brother's keeper uh had something to say uh that would encourage and empower and educate our listening audience of men and women who love the men equally as well so again we're so god thankful um for uh your listening and uh, allowing us access to your homes through your mobile device through roku through fire stick whatever vehicle of media that you listen to us so we're again god thankful thank you thank you thank you all right yes sir did you want to say something? Oh, i just want to say thank you to you who uh came up with this vision of putting this show together uh five years is is an awesome amount of time Amen. it's the God. longest running show on the uh wbgr network Amen. and Amen. uh Praise while God. i haven't been with you the entire five years i thank mm -hmm. those who mm -hmm. sat in this seat mm -hmm. before i came Amen. uh for you know paving a way for me to come in and this is kevin me. richardson uh elder um uh, Ernest Richards, thank you so, so much for coming, and the plethora of guests that came Man. in. Yes, and, it's, yeah. as I go back and look through the vault <laughs> of uh, My Brother Keeper shows, man, yes. I, I just see the awesome yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like yeah. shows that you had, the topics, the yes. guests. Yes. Um, and again, I think one of the biggest things that I, I, I commend you for and, and being willing to touch and tackle the topics that others are afraid to touch Amen. And, Amen. Uh, and and as brothers those are the things that Amen. you know when we talk about real men we talk about real talk and that's what this show uh, has been about Amen. so I thank God for you thank you for allowing me to join you uh, Amen. on the show Amen. well definitely God thankful and it um, it is only but by the grace of God that I have been able to move in the capacity in which I, I have been able to, um, God thankful for his grace. Uh, the number five is grace. And I'm God thankful for his grace that he has allowed me to uh, bring forth as uh, waters. It's the man of understanding that is able to bring forth that vision and the waters that others are able to drink from. So I am God thankful. Because definitely, as I look back even on my life, it is a testimony of what God can do and will do for if you just trust him. Amen. If you just trust him. Amen. So, all right. So, um, as we just make an announcement, I'll make one quick one. And for those of you who remember uh, last week, we talked about Make Black Count. Make and Black we Count. we talked about the upcoming census and how mm -hmm. important it is for you to participate, being yes. proactive in your engagement, yes. mm -hmm. making sure that you and others in our community are counted. want to just remind you that uh, tonight at 8 p.m. after this show, yes. there is going to be a broadcast a uh, held by the National Urban League, mm -hmm. and that will be at 8 p.m. tonight. It mm -hmm. will uh, feature Al Sharpton and Martin Luther King III, yes. amongst other uh, prominent individuals. And so we invite you to share. We will, I know we put the link on last week, but we'll put the link on again this mm -hmm. week for you to be able to Amen. join into that Amen. show. Amen. Absolutely. So, all right. So I'll just, you know, kind of move into our. Uh, African American person. And, of and ladies and gentlemen, I know we got started late, but trust and believe we're going to take it and we're going to extend the same time that we were late <laughs> on this week. Amen. 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 All right. So, hey, <laughs> this is show. So I'm, I'm just, I was going to rush through something, but now I'll take my time. <laughs> but, uh, look, okay. so, um, Man, I tell you, it's just a lot of things have been going on. Okay. And this person has just continuously come to the forefront mm -hmm. of conversations okay. that have been going on. Mm -hmm. And I was at the African American uh, History Museum today, and I was with my cousin. My cousin's in town from North Carolina, and he is in town to see okay. his son, mm -hmm. uh, who 
is um, a member of the Hofstra University uh, men's basketball team okay. who are right now as we speak are playing in the uh, championship mm -hmm. of their conference. The okay. winner will go to the NCAA tournament so I'm going to give a shout out to Caleb that uh, we're rooting for you today and to my cousin Alan and Donna Burgess who mm -hmm. I spent the day with. Mm -hmm. well, we're at the African American Museum and, and some things are going on. We start talking about this gentleman and um, we know him as uh, Congressman John Lewis. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was at an event last week. And during the event, it was the uh, United Negro College Fund uh, Gala. And they <coughs> recognized uh, the 60th year anniversary of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee mm -hmm. and some of their founders. Mm -hmm. Uh, which John Lewis was one of the founders mm -hmm. and later the uh, chairman. Uh, ironically, uh, if you're familiar with the organization, the first chair of the organization was someone that many of us in this room really know and love very well uh, because he was the former mayor of Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. was given the title of mayor for life. <laughs> and you know what? We got to do him soon, too. Yes, sir. You yes, know? Sir. Absolutely. Because he's one of the three pillars of D.C. And he just had a birthday. Yeah, Marion Barry, <laughs> one of the three pillars of D.C. Mm -hmm. See, when it comes to D.C. and D.C. legend, mm -hmm. it's Marion Barry. Mm -hmm. Ben Ali mm -hmm. and Chuck Brown. That's right. Those are the three pillars of DC history. But but we but that's not who we're gonna talk about today. But okay. we just want to say that he, along with John Lewis, okay. was one of the founders of the organization in 1960. But John Lewis comes from the background of being born in Troy, Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, to parents who were sharecroppers. He attended the American Baptist Theological Seminary mm -hmm. and then went on to Fish University where he received a Bachelor's of Arts in Philosophy and Religion. Okay. Both schools being in Nashville, Tennessee. It was during that time that he began to be very mm -hmm. engaged in student movement. So he led the Nashville Student Movement mm -hmm. uh, prior to then becoming uh, engaged as one of the founders of the Student Nonviolent Coordinator Mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. um, during that time when he was uh, he became the chair mm -hmm. later that gave him the opportunity to be one of the members of the big six mm -hmm. and the big six were the organizers of the march on Washington yes, in sir. 1963. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he was the youngest member mm -hmm. of that big six uh, of organizers so you know we see often we ha hear the my, I Have a Dream speech mm -hmm. by Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. but if you yeah, look at yeah, full yeah, video yeah, yeah, of yeah, that day, yeah. you'll see a very young mm -hmm. uh, John Lewis yes, getting yes, this sir. crowd yes, very sir. excited. Mm. Man, because, you know, I've heard him uh, speak a couple of times and, and from his political platform, mm -hmm. but then, you know, I, I, the, you can hear him when he's talking from that activist platform. Mm -hmm. Man, you, you hear a little different hum in his voice. Yeah, you know, yeah. a little something that... Mm -hmm. uh, that Mm -hmm. that us in the black church we're kind of familiar with yes, sir. but yes, sir. Uh, he was dynamic speaker so if you've never seen that you want to see the uh, speech that he gave mm -hmm. on the uh, during the march on on Washington but after being an activist uh, in the community he also then later became a member of the city council of Atlanta yes and from there he decided mm -hmm. to run for uh, Congress mm -hmm. uh, he was first elected in 1986. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is uh, what they call the dean mm -hmm. of the Georgia delegation. Uh, he's one of the yes, most sir. senior members yes, of, of Congress. Uh, uh, Susan mm -hmm. Pelosi said the other day, described him as the conscious voice. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That lady I'm, I named, she was on, uh, what was that, All My Children? But... Uh, <laughs> So, but uh, Nancy, thank you. <laughs> Susan, <Lucy. laughs> so you're her too. <laughs> so, so uh, Nancy Pelosi. Well, let me just say that the Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House, <laughs> she said that John Lewis has been the moral conscious mm -hmm. of the. Um, Con uh, of Congress, yes. and uh, so we know about him and his leadership yes. in the uh, Congressional uh, Black Con 
caucus and other things, but we just want to just say this because, like I say, his name has been yes. coming up so yes. much. What I also want you to just be on the lookout for, Erica Alexander, mm -hmm. uh, actress and uh, producer, um, mm -hmm. is doing a documentary mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. him, and I believe it's going to be uh, CNN Movies. Okay. One of his... Uh, favorite phrases was there's a thing called get you when you talk about getting in trouble mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. calls it good trouble okay. and many of us need to engage in good trouble come on somebody. i believe that may be the name yes, of sir. the documentary mm -hmm. so be on the lookout for it. they had a um, a very quick uh like maybe two minute trailer mm -hmm. of it but be on the lookout because it's coming out soon it's about the uh life of john lewis mm -hmm. and we just want to recognize mm -hmm. him again as we said we don't want to just recognize those individuals who have gone on yes those who mm -hmm. are still continuing yes. to make a difference yes. in yes. our community yes. and we just want to also lift him in prayers in mm -hmm. december he was diagnosed with uh, cancer yes. and uh, so we want to keep him in prayer mm -hmm. uh that uh he will you know find health Mm -hmm. and, and, and strength during yes. these times. But we yes. also want to acknowledge the strength that he has given us mm -hmm. uh, yes, to continue to push on. Mm -hmm. So today our African American uh, person of interest is <clears throat> Congressman John Lewis. Yes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we're going to get ready for now is our guest. And um, he is uh, certainly no stranger um, to the My Brother's Keeper show. He appeared um, last year um, with a documentary. Um, he was um, within a documentary, Here's My Heart, um, A Journey to Freedom. Um, his name is Mr. Ronald J. McCray, and um, he's here. He's going to be um, sharing his autobiography. Uh, his book is God Who He Say He Is, and um, we look forward to this um, autobiography, and uh, I ask that you please like and share, and may this segment bless you richly. So right after this break, we will come right back to you. We're going to show you a clip um, of uh, the autobiography, which is the book. And after that, we'll come right back with our guest, Ronald J. McCray. See you soon. The medical world tells us that abuse doesn't make a person gay. And while that may be true, it was an influential factor in why I chose same-sex relationships. The hardest part about writing my book was reliving some of the most painful, darkest memories of my life, sexual abuse, and abandonment, rejection. It's very transparent, very um, honest. You know, I lived in just a constant state of uncertainty about tomorrow, um, hopelessness, all of the brokenness that shaped the broken identity that I had lived for so many years. No matter who I was with, no matter who I was doing X, Y, and Z with, um, it didn't come with peace. It came with emptiness. It, came, it was like this void that just kept expanding and expanding. But when I met Jesus, um, I found fulfillment to that void in my life. And he has given me such great contentment where I don't need to turn to uh, men anymore or my vices. Like, I'm totally satisfied happy in this relationship that I have with Jesus Christ. I think what has been most pronounced in my journey of 10 years, not just of uh, walking away from the homosexual lifestyle, uh, but turning away from everything that God calls sin and embracing the life that he says is good, that he says is holy, uh, is the transformed or the renewed mind. I noticed that as I walked with him in a relationship that I didn't view even myself the same anymore. Um, and he has given me such a peace that I didn't have before. You know, he has uh, given me things that I never thought that I would have. So he just come and flipped my world upside down and has shown me that he is really everything I ever needed and I'm so glad that he did. My desire for this book is to 
share what God is able to do in a life that is submitted to him. In no way do I desire for this uh, book to be used as a tool to harm anyone. I remember what it felt like to be gay bashed. I remember what it felt like to be spat upon and physically assaulted and verbally assaulted on the basis of my sexuality. So I would never want to um, provide a tool for somebody else to do something like that to anyone. I know that this book will make some people uncomfortable, both in the church and outside of the church, but I, I hope that people see that this is a, a love story. I think the book is really for anyone who is looking for hope. I think at the heart of it, we all relate to one another, although our experiences are different. We're all wrestling with sin, we're all wrestling with brokenness, and my desire is that through my story, people can rightly see Christ and his uh, ability to meet us where we are um, and to bring hope and to bring transformation and to bring healing in. Um, that it will allow people to see that God is not afraid or intimidated or repulsed by broken and sinful people, but he actually died for them. And his love inspired him to uh, die for people like me. Um, so I definitely think that it will inspire people um, to have a better understanding of how loved they are by God and that he doesn't hate them. God loves us beyond anything we can ever do. Well, welcome to the show, Ronald McCray. There you go. Welcome. Now nah, it just came on. <laughs> it just came on. It just came on. Okay. Welcome to the show, Ronald McCray. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming and uh, sharing with us about your autobiography, "Is God Who We Say He Is." Tell us about the birthing uh, of this book. Sure. Well, um, again, thank you for having me um, as a guest on the show to talk about my autobiography. Uh, and really, the book is my life story um, mm -hmm. of my journey of transformation from brokenness um, to wholeness mm -hmm. um, in you know, pursuit of freedom in Christ. Um, and sp more specifically, is my journey of deliverance from homosexuality. Um, and it's been a little over a 10-year journey now. Amen. Um, and it really goes into detail of, um, you know, who I was prior to, to Christ mm -hmm. and um, just the, the journey, um, the real-life journey that it was mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, I'm, I, I believe we overcome, you know, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And every day that we walk through this journey with God, we're still overcoming something. So the story Amen. is still yet being written. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, you was gonna jump in or no no go okay ahead. <laughs> um who is the target audience for this writing well when i first started <clears throat> to write the book um the target audience i think i had very narrowly was the lgbt community because mm -hmm. that is the community from which i've come mm -hmm. um but since i've like started writing and just going through like some of the more difficult chapters of kind of reliving the experiences of sexual abuse and mm -hmm. rape. I was able to heal from those things and rape and sexual abuse are not gender specific. They're not mm -hmm. um, pigment specific. Mm -hmm. It's any, everyone uh, can, can mm -hmm. be and has been, uh, you know, impacted by that. So I started to see that my audience was much larger than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. I found that there were people who had never walked in my shoes who, mm -hmm. you know, heard my testimony and said, hey, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, mm -hmm. I'm 60 years old. I never told anybody that I was sexually abused. Mm -hmm. And the first time that they were sharing that was with me. And so God has allowed me to be able to connect with people from all different walks of life because mm -hmm. Brokenness is brokenness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the solution is all the same mm -hmm. as Jesus. Yeah, and it, it rears his head in, in many capacities, right. and absolutely, behold, all things become new. Absolutely. You may not be uh, in a place of delivered uh, from homosexuality, but you're fornicating, you're an adulterer. Right. It's, it's, it's a sin, right. and so we're all coming becoming new through the blood, and that's a, that's a, a powerful piece there, and thank you for... First of all, sharing your, your coming and sharing your testimony and being transparent in this place and uh, trusting me with your story. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Can you take us to a place of, um, I don't want to really deal with so much of the brokenness, but can you take us from the place of brokenness to uh, the transformation? 
Sure. So my first recollection of being broken was at the age of nine when I was introduced to pornography and kind of in that space with the people that were present, there was a close male relative and two of his male friends. And essentially they began to experiment on me what they saw the men doing to the women. Mm -hmm. Again, I was only nine years old. I had no idea what sex uh, was outside of what you know you heard mm -hmm. and jokes in school and, um, and things of that nature. But I didn't know what the purpose of sex was, why mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. created it. So mm -hmm. it was perverted before I had an opportunity to learn it the right way. Before I had an opportunity to learn healthy touch mm -hmm. from men, it was perverted. And that's when the seed of brokenness was put inside of me. Mm -hmm. And so it introduced the curiosity of same-sex attraction. Mm -hmm. I started to see men differently, some guys my age, some guys older. While I wish I could say that that was the first and last experience of sexual abuse, mm -hmm. it continued with those same individuals later in life at the hands of different individuals. Mm -hmm. And it had just become the theme of my life. The pattern of my life was uh, sexual harassment and bullying. Mm -hmm. And I was always the more uh, sensitive type, the mm. sensitive personality type. I didn't really connect well with the more rough and tumble guys who played contact sports. Mm -hmm. And I was always made to feel that because I didn't enjoy those things that I was uh, inferior, I was weaker, I was feminine. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. people in the neighborhood started to call me names like fag and sissy. And I was afraid to come out of the house sometimes because the guys within our cul-de-sac in which we live, they would just make fun of me mm -hmm. so badly. I literally had to sneak out of the side door in hopes that they wouldn't see me. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I began to internalize that and say to myself, well, mm -hmm. if these are the things that people are saying about me, then surely it must be true. Mm -hmm. And so I embraced it. And I, you know, as I mentioned, having the attractions, mm -hmm. I I denied it as long as I could, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I asked God to take them away. And in the first chapter of my book, is called The American Dream. Um, it starts off with me talking about how, like many in the LGBT community, I prayed for God to take away these attractions, mm -hmm. but they didn't go away. And so, although I knew that pursuing same-sex relationships uh, went against the scriptures, I just kind of went headlong into embracing my brokenness mm -hmm. that is what made most sense to me emotionally mm -hmm. i didn't have that um sexual precedence with a woman my first sexual encounter was with a man and mm -hmm. so that was my first point of sexual reference and so at the age of 16 you know i'm online and i'm meeting different people mm -hmm. and i started at 16 and just kind of went through what the term was called coined the life uh, you know i try to steer away from that term now because it means something totally different today than it did when I, you know, lived in the, you know, in the life. Mm -hmm. But I, the sum of it is I went from one relationship to another, uh, one mm -hmm. encounter after the other, hoping to find fulfillment, mm -hmm. but I just felt empty. I felt that something was missing mm -hmm. and I didn't know that what was missing was God. Mm -hmm. I had kind of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm disconnected myself from church for a number of years and mm -hmm. disconnected myself um, from family mm -hmm. because I felt you know rejected in you know many ways by some people who judged me on the basis of my sexuality mm -hmm. and so I felt alone mm -hmm. and the community that was willing to welcome me was the LGBT community mm -hmm. but they didn't have the sustenance for my soul mm -hmm. although they embraced me as a friend yes sir and yes, they welcomed me into the family. Yes, um, mm -hmm. I was just as empty and as dead um, as some of them that I connected with mm -hmm. were. It mm -hmm. was like trying to find, I say this often, it was it was like trying to find water, me being the empty glass from mm -hmm. another empty glass. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That was the story of, mm -hmm. of my life and just wrestling with depression and uh, entertaining suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. and really questioning my existence and I came to the point of really crying out from from my heart mm -hmm. is God who he says he is like mm -hmm. is he able to mend mm -hmm. a broken heart mm -hmm. is he able to mm -hmm. change the life of those that society and the church has deemed as um, the equivalent to the sin of blasphemy mm -hmm. uh, could mm -hmm. God do a, a 180 on my life and turn me yes, around sir. and so through mm -hmm. the pages of my book you will you, you, you get a, a close 
um, view of what my life was like up until that point when Jesus changed my life on October 18th of 2009. That moment. Amen. Amen. That moment. That's very powerful. And, and again, thank you for your authenticity, your authenticity, your genuineness, and just being just straight up transparent. And I think a lot of times we, um, these are conversations that men need to have. And, and oftentimes when they're not had or if we don't embrace, then we have uh, people who are broken running around breaking other people. Just brokenness begets brokenness. And the amazing um, illustration that you gave with um, the LG... BT, uh, how they embrace you, mm -hmm. but out of all of their brokenness, they were still willing to embrace. Right. But I think uh, had they had that water to fill the cup, you know, that you would have come through a, a different process. Sure. But coming out of uh, the the life sure. per se, um, what was the forgiveness like? What was the forgiveness? Because I. I I, I really want you to kind of really speak to the people out there sure. that um, may be encountering uh, coming out of the brokenness, mm -hmm. but need to release the pain sure. of someone dropping them. Sure. How was the forgiveness? So the forgiveness was that that was a journey as well. I I don't know necessarily that I took pride in harboring bitterness and unforgiveness against the individuals who abused mm -hmm. me. I just, I, I was told at a young age never to tell anybody mm -hmm. what happened, and I didn't until probably the age of 22 or 23. Okay. So to confront those individuals, or at least one of them, mm -hmm. um, that was a very difficult thing to do, but God continued to knock on the door of my heart to show me that in order to heal in the layers where I had been broken, mm -hmm. I had to let go. Mm -hmm. I had to, mm -hmm. I had to allow him to, to clear the drain. Mm -hmm. When we forgive, that's the unclogging of the drain that has yes. been, you know, clogged mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. gunk and all of mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the spirit of God can flow freely mm -hmm. and move mm -hmm. and, and work in those areas. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I also talk about this in the book as well, the name of the chapter, I'm not going to give out all the chapters, but the name, <laughs> the name of the chapter is called Hashtag Men Too. Um, and it, it's really showing that, um, yes, me too, mm -hmm. you know, as far as women are concerned, but men experience yes. sexual abuse as well. Mm -hmm. And in that chapter, toward the tail end of it, I talk about sitting in the, the vehicle with that relative and just pouring out my heart to, to him and explaining it's really sharing with him how much he broke me mm -hmm. and I didn't I wouldn't have thought of it in that context unless God showed it to me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I embodied mm -hmm. my brokenness mm -hmm. that is what molded and shaped my life yes. to the point where I didn't think of it like I'm living this way because I was broken I was I was just living life and God began to take the veil from my eyes to mm -hmm. show me the roots of my brokenness yes, and it yes, went sir. back down to abandonment yes, and rejection and yes, sexual sir. abuse mm -hmm. yeah. and other things that are discussed in the book as well but I in pouring out to him how he had hurt me I told him I want mm -hmm. you to know that I forgive you yeah. And I don't hold you captive, and I want you to forgive yourself as well. Because I could have made the decision very much like Joseph in Genesis, when mm -hmm. his brothers had sold him into slavery. When he met them, his brothers in Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, years later, mm -hmm. he could have made the decision to, after his father yeah. died, to mm -hmm. act really harshly toward mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and to pay them back for what they had mm -hmm. done to mm -hmm. him. But instead, he embraced them, and yes. he loved them, and yes. he forgave them. And if he would have held on to that, he would have died a bitter man. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so just mm -hmm. using that as a, oh you know, a framework, mm -hmm. had I done this with this same relative and not forgiven um, that individual, mm -hmm. I would have, I would still be broken today. Mm -hmm. I was the effects Amen. of the Amen. abuse to, mm -hmm. to this day. Amen. And when he got out of the car and closed the door, the all the pain and the weight that I had carried for years Bless left the car. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you, God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's powerful. Amen. That's powerful. But I, I do know that within that transformation process, forgiveness is key yes. in, in order to move. It's, it's like still having the, the dirt. Uh, you're trying to go somewhere new, but still having the dirt on your shoes. And you're tracing the dirt into the new place. But we're God thankful for the spirit of forgiveness. Dr. Champion. 
Uh, yeah, I, first of all, let me again, uh, and you've been with us before, and I said this before, uh, one, I appreciate you for your willingness to uh, share your story uh, and for your willingness to be transparent. Mm -hmm. As you say that as you're being transparent, mm -hmm. that breaks down the walls with others. Mm -hmm. They might mm -hmm. not have a similar story, but they do have a story. Mm -hmm. They have brokenness, mm -hmm. and they want to be healed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they hear a story of transformation, it allows them to see that God can do Hallelujah. what they've done, what Hallelujah. God has done for you Hallelujah. with them. And I think that's very mm -hmm. important. And, and as men, we just are not willing to mm. share our story, mm. regardless of what that story yeah. is. And I yeah. tell people all the time, never be ashamed of your story because mm. God gave it to you. Mm. And anything that God gives you mm. is a blessing. Yes. Right. And yes. so when God gives mm. us a story and we, you know, have a transformation, the blessing that we're supposed to be to others is to share that story yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And, and to do so for. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that you say, and, and I, and, and I kind of, I guess, work my way to this is you talked about uh denial and, mm -hmm. and rejection mm -hmm. and and how mm -hmm. the uh community was welcoming mm -hmm. but there was not you did not feel that foundation somewhere else yeah but you told a story before mm -hmm. about coming to the church mm -hmm. and about how some men mm -hmm. in the church welcomed you sure. and began to mentor you mm -hmm. and assist it with that transformation sure yeah uh, well i would like to say just to give a shout out to maybe any of the men who, of my church who are watching now, and I often um, take advantage of the opportunity in testimony service just to thank the men for their example. Amen. Sometimes we are Amen. we observe people without them mm. even knowing, yes. and so that was really what mm. was happening. I was in this new environment. I you know came from you know dressing very effeminately to being around um, majority effeminate men, and so mm. I kind of took on those mannerisms as well i hadn't worn a suit since the prom <laughs> before coming to church and i i hated it because it just felt manly and although i'm a man i did not think of myself in that context and so coming into the church and seeing men carry themselves not in a sense of a like a machismo or this toxic masculinity but it was a godly masculinity and i, I don't think i'd seen that in men before Amen. and so just being in uh, choir rehearsal and in our services and you know just in, in ch church environments mm -hmm. it gave me an opportunity Amen. to see what go godly men looked like the flip side to that however and I talk about this in the book as well is there were moments when I would have like silent anxiety attacks when I was like in church around these other men because I felt like oh my gosh I'm not like them um, and I thought to myself, maybe I am gay or maybe I'm still gay. You know, why am I not like them? Mm -hmm. But God was walking me through my own process. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he yes, told sir. me yes, that sir. he would make me the example that he desired to mm. see. And I just remember mm. over the mm. months I would stand before the mirror and I would just look at my reflection. And it was hard to recognize myself sometimes. And tears would just fall from my, fa fall from my face. Because what I saw looking Thank back at me was the transformation of the man mm -hmm. that God created mm -hmm. me to be, mm -hmm. was the healing looking back oh at God. me. And it wasn't mm -hmm. something that I was putting on for anybody. Mm -hmm. This was a, a work that God was doing in my heart that was now bleeding through on the Jeez. outside. Mm -hmm. And so oh to see that transformation happening was mind blowing for me. Wow. And so I'm a firm believer that we are products of our environments. Mm -hmm. And so it's important Hallelujah. that when you're coming out of any sin, uh, it's important to surround yourself with the body of believers, with people who are walking on this journey uh, with you. And even if they're mm. not walking in the same shoes that you are, sin is sin. Yes, yes. And it doesn't matter if it's mm -hmm. what type of sin it is, we can all identify with mm -hmm. that, even mm -hmm. if it, the manifestation of it is different. Mm -hmm. But even in me walking through that process and everybody else was you know, maybe years into their journey, some of their t testimonies I may not even know, but I was able to glean strength from yes. them. Mm -hmm. I yes. was able to glean, just mm -hmm. learn about what it looked like to, you know, lead a, a family. Mm -hmm. I came mm -hmm. from a family of dysfunction, so mm -hmm. I didn't see a healthy mother and father. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it was refreshing to be able to see a man lead his home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, under the, you know, headship of Christ. Yes, yes. yes sir. And seeing what that looked like. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Yeah. It's powerful. It's amazing because even in that setting, it's that love. And the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. And so whatever it is we, we are called out of, it's the love that covers us. So it's like, can you cover me? You know, as you went into the church, can you cover me? You know, and uh, whether, you know, whatever your, your, your it is, can you cover me? And we as believers that are, are stronger than uh, or more mature than others must be able to cover others who are coming in, in and through love. That's right. Because that's what covers a multitude of sins. Um, was the writing process exhausting or energizing? How was that writing process? Well, the writing process took place for during a period of nine years. God spoke to me one day when I was in the kitchen washing dishes, and he spoke to me and said, can I use you? And you know, you know, the churchy thing to say is, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the song is saying, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. So I said, yes, Lord, not knowing what mm -hmm. he had in store for me. And he said to me, it might involve, or it will involve exposing the guilt and shame of my past. Mm -hmm. And then it just progressed from there of him you know, showing me that I will be sharing my story mm -hmm. and he told me to write a book. And it's taken nine years because I've been healing through mm -hmm. the nine years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more experience today, 10 years later than I did if I would have yes. finished it the second year I got saved. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more perspective. I've, you know, I, none of us have crossed every T and dotted every I and mm -hmm. being able to write from those experiences mm -hmm. of how the grace of God meets us mm -hmm. uh, when we do fall short. His grace. And just mm. how he's turned my life around with me being a husband and mm -hmm. being a father. I'm able to write from those perspectives as well that Amen. you can experience a transformation or a renewal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, completely. Mm -hmm. You can go from you know one life to like new life in Christ. And yeah. I never would have thought I would be yeah. married yeah. or have a child. I never thought any woman would want to, you know, be with someone. Congratulations on your son. Thank you. One Thank years you. old now. One year old. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. Congratulations. Thank a beautiful you. wife as well. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Fatima. 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 Yeah. Okay. Fatima. Fatima. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was... I forgot the E in there. I yeah. thought it was an A. Okay. Fatima. But definitely congratulations on, on your marriage, your son, and what God is doing in and through you. Amen. That's a, that's a tremendous blessing. Dr. Champion? Amen. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I think, you know, one of the things that um, sticks with me about your story as well, again, as we just talk about, and, and this is, as Christians, something that we all have to deal with, mm -hmm. is how we can not be accepting at times. And so when we're mm -hmm. not accepting, mm -hmm. we're turning folk away to mm -hmm. somebody else who's going to be accepting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so we're playing God because we're, we're judging. We are, but, mm -hmm. but God is telling us, and this is something in, in the church we have to really begin to deal with. It, you wonder why churches don't grow. Sick. It's because we, want, we don't open the doors mm -hmm. of the church. We yes, close sir. the yes, doors sir. of the church yes, because we're not willing to welcome mm -hmm. folk into the faith. And it's not our job to, to make those decisions. That's between yes, that individual and God. and God. But it is our job mm -hmm. to welcome folk mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the faith. Because, as you know, it's kind of like you, you probably, everybody probably remembers that uh, when you were uh, going through certain things in your life, if, if there wasn't one group that would accept you, there was always some mm -hmm. other group mm -hmm. that would accept you. So somebody's mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. accept you because mm -hmm. that's the one thing when we look at life and, and the basic needs of being a human, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they begin with things like food, shelter, mm -hmm. we look for love, mm -hmm. we look for community. That's right. So, that's right. so we're going to right. look for community that's until right. we find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and when people mm -hmm. find community outside the church because right. the church mm -hmm. did not welcome them into the community, mm -hmm. then the church is no longer being in the church. That's right. That's right. You absolutely. You're on point. You're on point there, um, ladies and gentlemen. Call in number. You have a question that you would like to ask uh, Mr. McRae or comment. Uh, definitely 301-429-9247. 301-429-WBGR. Um, what did you learn about you during this process? learned about me. No one has ever asked me that question before. I wanted to take a second to think about it. That's all right. Take a second. Ding, ding. Take a second. <laughs> what I learned about myself is 
just looking at the pages of my book, I try so hard, I think, to... Like, God has saved me, and he told me that he was going to transform me, but I think I was trying to help him. Mm. And I had to come to the realization that all I got to do is just submit to God mm -hmm. and let him do with my life what he wants to do with it. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't look the way that I think I should look, mm -hmm. even if I don't walk and talk the way that I think I should walk, I am the man that God has created me to be. Mm. Yeah. And we are all very unique and very different. Yes. And that is okay. And yes. I've come to a yes. sense of security in myself mm -hmm. where no one can tell me who I am because I mm -hmm. know who I am. Right. Yeah. I know who God has yeah. made me to. That's powerful. That's powerful. So you're you've learned more self identity. Yes. Your your identity is in God's divinity. Yes. Dun dun. That's uh, very powerful. Uh, do we have any comments in this session? Uh, this time, just amen and thank you for your transparency. Sister Candice. I have a comment, um, and it sort of piggybacks off of what um, Reverend Champ was saying. Um, it's the part that struck me, and that was the church. Because what you said was um, you started going to church at about the age of 21 with a friend, mm -hmm. and they welcomed you. Mm -hmm. They didn't see your brokenness. They saw you, the human, mm -hmm. and they loved you. Mm -hmm. And that was so very profound to me wow. Wow. because of the churches and the way the churches are today. Mm -hmm. That even in my past, I've taken homosexual people into the church. And by the time the ushers get finished whispering or somebody makes a rude comment, they no longer want to come back to the church. Mm -hmm. And so um, a hom the homosexual has always been a passion of mine because God has always put it on my heart that what the church has done to homosexuals in the past is not acceptable. It's totally unacceptable. So your particular story... Um, barked at me, roared at me. Um, and so even when you saw me come in with the enthusiasm to meet you, because um, I, I dug deep because I relate. Um, but I love what you said about the church. And they saw you, they loved you, they changed your perception. And it was love that lifted you. Uh, and uh, uh. if the churches could just learn, <laughs> if the churches would just learn from that, mm -hmm. that, that, that it is not our job to judge mm -hmm. or to change because mm -hmm. we don't have the power, mm -hmm. you have no heaven or hell to put you in, but that we welcome whoever, whoever um, and be able to love them and Amen. allow God to work on them while we love them yes. like God loved us. Yes. Amen. In um, our stuff. In our stuff. Um, you also said you had to surrender. And that's a big piece mm -hmm. because a lot of times we look for that change, but we're not willing to give up mm -hmm. ourselves completely mm -hmm. in Christ. And that surrender that's something that happened. led you to repentance. Mm -hmm. And that repentance, after that, you were filled with the, with the Spirit of God and delivered from bondage with a thorn. <laughs> yeah. but, it's, but that's God. Well, right? Paul still had... We're still, and we don't know what the thorn is, mm -mm. but I got mm -mm. it. We don't know what the thorn is. You know what I'm saying? Well, but even in, as, as uh, Paul talks about the thorn and said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Mm -hmm. So that means that he still has. It keeps, it, but it just keeps yeah. us humble and, and Absolutely. In remembrance that we still That was the purpose of, of the thorn. Yes. But hey, check this out, though. But the thorn, if we're not careful, can also prick somebody else. That's, that's true. That's so, true. Absolutely. Like, to, Go ahead. But, I'm um, sorry, Candace. My, and this is my final point. Go ahead. Piece. I just want to encourage you because the audience is wider than you think it is. Mm. And I agree with you. Um, you know, although some may act as if this is the one unforgivable sin, um, Jesus died for all. He didn't say he died for everyone except for dot, dot, dot. Um, so this will um, reach a lot more people than you think. Amen. Um, because a sin is a sin. Bondage, fornication, mm -hmm. adultery. It doesn't matter if it's heterosexual or homosexual. Everybody is in something. Mm -hmm. So everybody can relate. Amen. And um, so I just applaud you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for your commentary. You know, the one thing I want to say, and, and as we're talking about the yeah. church, and, and we talk about sin, is oftentimes, and it's not even really about sin, mm -hmm. oftentimes about when churches welcome Yes, people. Yeah. Sometimes it's just about I don't know you, yes. mm -hmm. and and that's just as bad. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you didn't dress 
the right way or you're from the wrong family. Yes. See, see, we're, we're called to be so much more, more inclusive than, than that. Yeah. So we can sit up here and say, okay, we will accept the sinner, mm-hmm. but we won't accept somebody else. See, it says, that, you know, it's hard enough mm-hmm. sometimes for unchurched to come to church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, because they're dealing with the fact yeah. Yeah. of yeah. if will God accept me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it says, mm-hmm. just as I am, I come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, if, if God's willing to accept me mm-hmm. just as I am, mm-hmm. and I'm willing to walk through the door, mm-hmm. then the members of the church need to accept me. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Just because if you don't, that's mm-hmm. it. somebody else is going to take yeah. me just as yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my blood will be on your hands. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. I'm sorry. Go yeah, right no, that's good. Hey, hey, you're good. No, I'm trying to get back to Ronald. No, that's, what I'm that's okay. But, 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 I'm just saying when we talk about see what you don't ignited, man. No, 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 that's, good. That's, that's good. Church that's good. That's it. That's what we need. And that, that's what. That, and that's one of the key messages. I mean, there's yes. a lot of messages in what you yes. say. Yes. But but the point is, is that they will. The church was accepting mm-hmm. and welcomed you yes. and made you feel comfortable and mm-hmm. made you feel willing yes. to be a part of their mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so many times we, we you know, yeah. I had a friend said, uh, you know, I got people joining the church, but they don't keep coming back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he told the congregation, he told the congregation, he said, I'm preaching them here. But y'all scaring them away. Yes. <laughs> so, and that's true. But, but and, that's, true. and that's the thing we got to say. No, nah, Reverend, ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> they walked down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and they came. So, I'm sorry. Well, but go, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, See what you ignited? <laughs> go ahead. I was just going to say that just to the viewers, maybe there is someone who has been fearful about going to church because you fear how the people might look at you or they're going to judge you. I had the same reservations as well, but I it was the Holy Spirit that just moved me to go and what I was expecting they were not. And this is not to say that there are not people who identify within the Christian community that won't judge because mm-hmm. you know I'll say everybody's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. However, there mm-hmm. are um, like the church mm-hmm. that you know, I was raised in the church that I am a member of now. They loved me really well. And even the church before that, uh, which is Greater Washington um, Pentecostal Church in Laurel, Maryland, uh, the pastor gave me the approval to give them a shout out in the book. <laughs> they were the church that I went to with my roommate. They mm-hmm. were the ones that I was expecting to judge me, but they didn't. Mm-hmm. They Amen. loved me. They invited mm-hmm. me out. The pastor mm-hmm. and, their, and their family invited me and my roommate out to dinner with them and just mm-hmm. made me feel like family and that opened my heart to mm-hmm. go back to the church that I was raised in. So no mm-hmm. every Christian is not hateful. Yeah. I know mm-hmm. every Christian mm-hmm. is not a homophobe. Whatever you have to push through to get to the house of God, mm-hmm. I encourage you to go because mm-hmm. as you were talking about Candace with the you know mistreatment of some in the church to the gay community, mm-hmm. and to some extent I experienced that as well. Mm-hmm. But God spoke to me, and He told me not. He, he told me to stand still. That's right. Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. what I what I was hungering for was God. I wasn't hungering for the church. Right. Hmm. I was hungering for God. Come on, somebody. Come and on. So my focus was God yes. when I came to church, and it's He's still my focus to this oh, day. So amen. don't allow mm-hmm. anyone mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. drive Stop you here. away from yes. God. Don't let mm-hmm. anyone deter yes. you. Mm-hmm. No one should have that type of power. That's right. But I do understand mm-hmm. that people have been hurt and wounded, and yeah. that deserves empathy. Mm-hmm. And maybe no one's ever said, I'm sorry to you, but I want to take a moment to say, I'm sorry if you have been hurt. Mm-hmm. And my heart really goes out to you, but I want you to know that Jesus amen. does love you. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's a blessing. That's amen. definitely a blessing. Um, as we get ready to wrap up, um, I want to give you an opportunity to share. Uh, you share it with what you've learned through the process. I want you to share what you learned about God through this journey. What I've learned about God is he is exactly who he says he is in the scriptures. Amen. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth yeah. is exactly who he says he is in the scriptures. He did not lie. He was not delusional about his identity. Mm-hmm. He is the savior of the world. He has the ability. He's, he, 
He truly did die for everyone, yes. for every yes. sin. Mm -hmm. And through him and through Jesus alone exclusively, can we be made new? It doesn't matter how you were born. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what um, inclinations you may have felt from early childhood. You can be a totally new person through Jesus Christ. So I just... I'm sorry that I've answered the question for you of my book without you reading it, but um, <laughs> hopefully you Well, tell them where can they get it. the book. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> where can they get the book? And it'll be out April the 28th, you said? Uh, the book will be out April 20th. However, 20th. it is available on pre-sale today. And you can uh, order a copy of the book at www.ronaldjmccray.com. M C C R A Y dot com. You can order it there. My, uh, if you desire to get in contact with me, I'm on Facebook at Ronald J McCray. My first book signing and launch, uh, book launch party and signing will be on May 1st in Maryland. So I would love to meet you. Uh, maybe you have a family member, or a friend, relative, or whomever that might be blessed by this book, and I would love to have you with me on that very special day. Amen. Amen. And that will be our May book of the month. Um, so we definitely look forward to uh, coming out to your book signing as well and uh, purchasing and making that the May book of the month. Amen. Awesome. And again, um, Dr. Champion, yes. your words of wisdom. Uh, well, now I just, moments we have again, left. I want to thank you for uh, coming and being with us today and sharing your story. And what, what I want to say to those who are listening, as you listen to this young man's testimony, and how a welcoming church gave him the courage to go back to his church. And so we don't know when God places us in our lives. It might not be for that person to join your church. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. disciples, mm -hmm. our mission is to lead people to Christ. Yes. And the first step of leading people to Christ is welcoming them. And accepting them yes so that they can see the Christ in you mm -hmm. so that's our challenge today to say hey yeah. please yeah. look beyond some of the things you that the earth wants you to see mm -hmm. and see what God is bringing before you yeah. amen amen thank you thank you and again um, also like to uh, thank you again for trusting uh, my brother's keeper with your story Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, Thank uh, you it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, one thing that, um, as I quoted earlier, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. So again, uh, no one can hold anyone in bondage. God calls us to love one another because love covers a multitude of sins. Can you cover me? Can you cover me? My time is up and I thank you for yours. I'd like to thank you so much for coming out tonight and joining my brother's Keeper Show. But remember, when good men stand together, they become greater. We are our brother's keeper and see you on the other side of greatness. God bless you. See you next week. Amen. My brothers keep a show. I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show. I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show. Introduce the host. My brothers keep a show. Oh, oh, oh. Introduce the host. Pastor Dr. Michael Green.